Hallelujah. We'll thank the Lord this morning. Be back in his holy place one more time. I thank our musicians, whoever helped me on the keyboard this morning. And what a smooth looking young fellow over there on the drum, but he was fancy. All right, that sample was working that time. Got a little bell over there just a ring. I said, oh my God, listen to that bell. Sound mighty good. Glad to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Thank God for the year 2021, and it is wrapping up fast. It's almost Thanksgiving. I guess every day is Thanksgiving, but we're going to celebrate with a turkey on Thursday morning coming, I understand. Today is the third Sunday in the month of November, the year of our Lord, 2021. Sunday, we do a little something a little different. We do a little guest speaker. We got a guest preacher with us this morning. He's one of our own. Let me come across. It's going to uh, bring our message for us this morning. And I'm going to ask you to pray with him and pray for him as he comes in his own way. But just before he comes, I'm going to uh, see if we can usher the Spirit of our Lord right on into this house. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for another Sunday, another Lord's Day. We thank you for the privilege of just being able to come and to, and to hear word from heaven. I thank you for every soul that's gathered around their telephones, their iPads, or whatever instrument that they're using to bring this service into their homes. I pray, God, that you, you'll bless in a mighty way. Use this preacher this morning to your glory, God. Let him preach Jesus to a dying world. Pray you to give him strength to stand and wisdom to be able to impart the words that you have us here this morning. For we need a word from heaven, Lord. So let Reverend, Reverend Clark down into your deep well of wisdom, crown him with knowledge and understanding and give him preaching power from on high. Thank you, God. I know that you can and I know that you will. Open up hearts, minds and the ears of every soul now that's tuned in that we might hear what you're saying to the church and I'll be careful to give you the honor the praise and the glory for you're worthy to be praised and I glorify you today God as we lift you up in the name of Jesus hallelujah and amen amen and amen at this time present to you our own Reverend Tommy Claw as he comes in his own way. I'm asking you to pray with him and pray for him as he comes and delivers to us whatever it is that the Lord has given to him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Reverend Clark. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There is a word on high this morning, and we're grateful that you're able to tune in with us and be a part of the service. I want to thank everyone for, on behalf of my family, uh, when we went through our bereavement period back in September, um, thank you for your prayers, your, your thoughts, and your monetary gifts, and your condolences that you extended to us during our time of uh, bereavement. We lost a brother and a cousin right there within a week's time. And things were mighty rough, but we know that God knows best. Amen? Amen. Um, I want you to come go with me this morning to the book of Luke, 23rd chapter. And we'll start at the Thirty-nine, verse. Uh, 
Jesus says. And one of the male factors, which were hang rail on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Amen. You know, I've chosen as a sermon topic today, which side are you on? But before we do that, I want to say a little prayer. Heavenly Father, we come this morning to say thank you once again for an opportunity to deliver your word, Father. Thank you for this church. Thank you for this sanctuary. Thank you for this pastor who has given me the opportunity to deliver, to deliver the word this morning. Lord, we ask that you speak to me and through me. Lord, I ask that you let it be more of you and less of me. Father, let that be a word from on high this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I'd like to send a shout out to Brother Bolo, who called me last night. That's Brother Sister Jean's uh, son, who's up there in Covington. And he called me last night to say that he wanted to touch base and he's had a family run in with COVID and whatnot. And he told me that he wanted me to know that he's still trusting in the Lord. And amen. And he says that uh, he's not a big church goer, but he he prays constantly. Sometimes on the way to work, he says he don't get on his knees as much as he'd like to. But amen. And I enjoyed the that we had on last evening. Let's take a look at the two culprits. The first one made a request of desperation. There was a good possibility if the fellow was released, he'd go right back to doing what he did that got him in there in the first place. All right. And so it kind of reminds me of that old 70s song by Carlos Santana that said, you go right back, Jack, and do it again. Because the criminal has a criminal nature about himself. And so he was one of those people who always had to be, he had to be first. And part of this sermon is about someone who wants to be first. One wants to be first to be released. And the other one wants to be first in God's kingdom. And you would ask yourself, which side are you on? Are you one of those people who want to do things to see just what you can get away with and not be punished for your actions? Because a lot of people think that rules don't apply to them. And then, you know, he would always... He, he always wanted to be first, and he, he probably showed no remorse for any of the awful deeds that he committed. He may have thought he was privileged and that rules didn't apply to him, that he may have thought that he would be granted dispensation, so to speak, that all other rules apply to everyone else but not to himself, where he could be exempted from these rules by usual requirements that other people, if you broke, the, if you did the crime nine times out of ten, you were expected to do the, do the time. But as for this young man, he was looking for a, a way out. He probably lived in a gated community. <laughs> and he probably thought that 
you know, he was armed with the latest weaponry, and he probably, if you disagreed with him, he probably shoot you and claim that he shot you in self defense. Rules didn't apply to him. But then, at, you know, he, 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 would, he would probably would have been highly perturbed if he had not been acquitted for the evil ways in which he's committed. And I know some people like that today that like to take matters into their own hands. And I did this, and I did that and take it all the praise. And what we're doing as a society is we're using an acronym, E-G-O. Every opportunity that we get, we will do everything we can to ease God out of the equation. Because mankind, I did this, I did that. I got up this morning with the help of the good Lord on time clothed and in my right mind, knowing that it is another day's journey, not being afraid to reach out and try to help someone. In this world today, I notice that the counterpart, the other party, so to speak, the ones who are not on the heavenly side, if you extend an olive branch to them, they hand you back a crown of thorns. And I am expected to love someone who hates me, despises me, and turn the other cheek. Well, here at Flag Chapel, we're taught grace and mercy, forgiveness, turning the other cheek by the ways of the New Testament. But there are those who, when offended, they want to go Old Testament on you all of a sudden. They want to do an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And they want to do wrong and be set free. Let's take, let's take a look at the other brothers who asked Jesus a different question. And he asked, he said that we are indeed, indeed guilty in our deeds, but we, this man has done nothing. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into thy kingdom. You know, when I got baptized, I remember I was told that, you know, you still got hell in you. Because... I was thinking that being dumped into the water, coming out a new creature, that everything would be washed away. Yeah. I didn't think that I had to get down and do some of the work. You see, salvation is free. Discipleship comes with a price. The moment that the devil knows that you have went to the other side, he gets busy. And he won't leave you alone. He'll send time. He'll send money. He'll send physical pleasures your way. Yeah. And when that don't work, he'll send time at you. He'll sit there and he'll twiddle his thumbs. And he'll try to figure out a way to get you back on his side. I know when I was saved, he lost a good soul. I could stand on the street corner and t tell you about who I was, what I was, what I could do, and how mighty I could sing and charm somebody and trick some little girl into doing something that probably didn't mean her no good anyway. But when it came to me opening my mouth to say something about God, you couldn't get a word out. A lot of people think that I want to get myself together before I go to church. I don't want to go down there and play with it. Well, we're down here 
and we're dead serious about it, and we're still struggling because we ourselves are just sinners. And Jesus said that all men have fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us has fallen short. Lot was trying to find a few good men before they destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. A few. Couldn't find one. And what makes you think that you've got it all together when you come through the doors and everything's going to be just fine? Because you fixed it before you got here. You're taking God's glory. God wants somebody he can fix. He wants the glory. To him be the glory. Not Tommy. I didn't do nothing. I did a fine job of messing my life up, making people hate me. And some of them don't even trust me now as a minister. I remember when you, I knew you when you. But no, I want to be one of those people who, Lord, when you get to where you're going, remember me. I want to hear him say those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let's take a look at the other brother here for a moment. There, um, One, one of them mocked Christ, demonstrating an utter lack of reason. One demonstrated the highest type of intelligence in eight ways. Number one, the other guy, he feared God. Something that everyone should do. He rebuked the other one for fearing God. Are you not afraid of God? I am. There was a time when I wasn't. But today I can acknowledge that in my helpless state of condemnation, in which I have brought upon myself, my sin, I can ask him, Lord, can I be on your side? I want to be on that side where, in that land of milk and honey. But I also would like to, while I'm down here, enjoy some of the amenities of the good life. I don't want to have to wait until I get to heaven to enjoy the fruits of my labor. I want to enjoy some of it down here. But there are some of those who want me to wait on mine while they enjoy theirs now. But, Lord, I ask you to help me create a clear mind of thinking, to be in your realm, Father. There are those this morning out there, some are incarcerated and can't go and come as they choose. But you and I were able to get up and go anywhere that we so choose, even going to the refrigerator just to get a drink of water. I was able to fix my own breakfast this morning. Amen. I was clothed and in my right mind. And I woke up singing praises to my God. I had an ailment last year. I was placed on dialysis. And I had a tough go of it. And a lot of you people called and prayed for me and with me. And today, things are much better. And I'd like to think that in my heart that those prayers were the ones that made my life a lot better. I believe in the power of prayer. There were times when I went out and did my dirt. And I asked God to be with me. And I thought that he was because I made it back home with what I had intended to do. 
And even though it was wrong, I thought wrong was right. It was my mind, my thought. It was the side that I was on. When I got here, I was a drug addict. I was a drunk. I wasn't a good father. I was none of the above. I got sobered up. You know what I was? All of those things. But I didn't try to change anything on the inside. I wanted to change the outside appearance. Brought a new suit, shaved, brought new shoes. Made me look like the part. But here I am. Inside, I was like a soup sandwich. Didn't know where it was. I was coming or going. But I knew I had to get on once. I couldn't go back to where I had been. I wasn't always met with loving arms when I came here. Because sometimes you've got to prove yourself. Are you real about this thing? Do you stop and stand back and look at this thing like it show sure enough is? That God is serious. God is real. And you don't come to God playing. God does not play. He may rest, but he does not play. He's on point 24-7. Our main mission as Christians is to love one another. Jesus instructed his disciples that I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And we spend most of our time afraid to love someone. I don't know you. That's the first thing we, we scream. I don't know you. Get to know them. In order to seek a friend, you must first yourself present yourself friendly. Amen? Amen? And I make it my thing that wherever I go, I try to be in a good mood after 10 o'clock. Because <laughs> I'm not a morning person. But as my day goes on, everyone that I come in contact with, I feel it's my duty to say, do something to make them smile. To bring some joy some way. I recently just got my driver's license back. I'm riding them down. I see somebody walking. I think they may need a ride. Where are you going? I'll take you. Don't worry about it. Come on. You don't owe me nothing. Because of the goodness that I've learned here from watching these deacons, these ministers, these people, these church members. At first, they were a little leery about me. I was a lot leery about them. But the love grew. My love for them grew. Their love for me grew. I could feel the sincere love that was coming from these people. And God did that. You want to know which side you're on. I was at a cookout the other day, and a friend of mine said, Reverend Clark, would you like a beer? I said, I would, but it might cause some commotion. I don't want to hear no noise. So the sister came over there. She says, what are you doing at the pot? Ain't you a preacher? I said, yes, I am. I said, but this is my cousin's affair. And I was trying to be cordial. And she said, you a preacher? I said, well, let me ask you something. You love Jesus? She said, yes, I do. I said, you drunk? There was nothing to it. She walked away. We love to point out other people's shortcomings and their defects of character. But we don't want to look at our own. We don't want to. I want to talk about the pebble in your eye, but I can't see the boulder in mine. Yeah, let's talk about you for a minute. So the brother, he confessed to Jesus that he had done wrong and he wanted to be in his kingdom. He wanted Jesus to look out for a brother. 
to help him out in his time of need. You know, I used to only call on God in times of trouble. When things were going good, I didn't have the common courtesy to just say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Oh, but I can sure tell you about I did this, I did that, and give me the glory. But if the glory is not mine, it is God Almighty. Now, you have two choices. I remember when I was incarcerated, there was an old man who pulled me off to the side. He said, you got two choices. Aryan brothers don't want you in their crew. And either one of these brothers will probably help you, these Muslims or these Christians. Now, which side are you going to be on? Because if you don't get somewhere and choose a side, there's a good possibility you will remain here and you'll continue to come back here. To some of my friends who are still out there, adding chapters to their struggles, I'm here to tell you today that God, if he can work in my life, he can help you. There are people that are afraid to go take a vaccination. When I came eligible for me to take my vaccination, I was the first in line. Crack didn't kill me. I'm not going to worry about no little vaccination. I can't even trust a trust factor. A lot of people don't even you trust. Let me tell you what trust was on the street. Elroy over there got some bad dope. Why? Because Ray Ray said so. And I trusted what Ray Ray said about Elroy over him because Ray Ray know what he talking about. But I can trust him, but I can't trust God. All I had was I used you, you used me, and we used drugs. That was it. That was no love. That was no compassion for your fellow man. If you OD, I go through your pocket and get your drugs and say, you use too much of it. Not thinking that one time that that could have been me. I, want, I don't want to make this about me, but I got to tell you about how I was when I was on the other side. You're going to have to give it up. You can't get on the boat if you still try to hold that bag of bricks. You got to let go of the bricks. Yes. Those things and those people don't care a heel of beans about you. Mm. God is love. He's always been love. Yes. And is it going to hurt you to love somebody? It's a, it doesn't take much. God said he wanted you to love me. He said you didn't like him. I know a lot of people I love, I don't like them. I don't hang around them. This world is big enough for all of us that we don't have to bump into one another and want to saw each other's heads off because I stepped on your foot. I used to tell people that young people scare me. They don't scare me. They better be scared of me. Because <laughs> I'm going to put God on them. I ain't got to wallop you upside your head to get my point across. Jesus said, if you go to a house and there, you're not welcome. Kick the dust from your heels and move on. I don't go anywhere trying to shove my religion down anybody's throat. But I will tell you about the goodness of what God has done for me. How he brought me out of the miry clay. I was one of them guys nailed on that cross. And there's a cross out there for you. There's one out there for you. 
And you're going to stand there with your arms stretched wide open, saying, Lord, please forgive me. I am but a sinner. Here I stand before thee as humbly as I know how. I can't, you can. I'm going to let go and let you. And that's what it's all about. Letting go and letting God is when you decide which side you are on. You can't serve two gods. You're going to hurt yourself. You can't straddle the fence. God has got something in store for you. And all you got to do is let him. It's just let him do what it is that he does. We say here at Black Chapel that he is God and he is God all by himself. And you know what? We let him be God all by himself. This is his house. For the last year, maybe eight months, I've been stranded on third base. I've been trying to make it back home. Every Sunday that I come to church, I feel like I'm safe because I can officially come into the house of worship and ask for forgiveness for the things that I've been guilty of during that week. Like a little child who's been bad and he's going to his parents saying, Please let me uh, get by this time. I'll, I'll do better. And that's what we're saying to God. Every time that we repent, we're saying that we can do better. Love a little harder. Love a little stronger is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. That guy who wanted to be in Jesus' kingdom, even though he was a criminal, he owned up to the wrong he had done. That's the first part of being saved, is realizing that you are. And that what's going on in your life isn't working for you. They had a saying in a 12-step program that I used to attend. Insanity is doing the same thing but expecting different results. And I did that time and time again. I'd get up in the morning. My thing, my ritual was to get high. And if I didn't have nothing to get high on, if I went into the bathroom seven days a week and someone in there hit me upside my head, if I went in there one day and my lick wasn't there, I was looking I didn't live from day to day. I lived from crisis to crisis. That's not a life for anyone. No woman wants you as a husband. The kids are ashamed of you as a father. But until you realize that there is a problem, that's when the healing begins. And it's all within you. This is something that I can't do it for you. Reverend Reed can't do it for you. The deacons can't do it for you. You've got to come to God on your own. And I don't care what you've done. Oh, well, Tommy, I'm, I've been out there on drugs, and I, 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 I'm just this. I got to oh, eating this. So he don't care. He's waiting on you. I don't care what you've done. God loves you. He loved me. Why do I love Jesus? Because he first loved me. Abraham was told to sacrifice his son. He was obedient to God. Let, 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 let God tell you to go do something to your son. You're going to be hesitant about it. I know I'd be. I love my son, but I love God more. Because God gave me that son. But God gave his only begotten son. He loved
love the world so much. And what this story tells us is that just like then, there were people who were crooked. And some wanted to be in the realm of God. And some wanted to do the work of Satan. They were there then. They're here now. Nothing has changed. Judas wasn't put there to just be the one particular to to, uh, betray Jesus. He was put there to show you that there will be people in your Christian walk who will betray you also. Just like they did him. There are those who will do like some of the disciples did. One of them cut off one of the dark ears for messing with Jesus, but this is what, what Jesus was. Jesus had a nonviolent movement. He was not about any physical confrontation. We mad because we ain't got no ride nowhere. Jesus walked everywhere. because you ain't got a ride. You're already riding the world, Tony. Amen? It's going a thousand miles an hour right now as we speak. And you worry because you ain't got a ride. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. In a mighty way, God has been good. I thank Reverend Reed for this opportunity. Thank him very much because he's done a great deal in my life. And he's shown by example which side he's on. And I know that he's a God fearing Christian. And I know because I didn't hear him say, I love the Lord. And he loves the Lord. And I think he does with every fiber of his being. I see things like that. I see Reverend Bentley and his dedication. And I remember he came down out of that choir stand to cry with me the morning I came down here and joined this church. It's these people who opened their loving arms and showed me by example what a good Christian is supposed to be like. Not an imitation Christian. Not one of them stovebox Christians. Not one of them chosen frozen Christians what a true Christian is all about. All I can say is, if you are thinking that life is at its wit's end, and your burdens are heavy, and you can't bear them, there's no need of calling your friend or your neighbor. Call on the one that your friends and neighbors Call on the one that mama and daddy used to call on. Call on the one who died on Calvary for your sin and mine. Call on him in the morning. Call on him in the evening. Call on him in the midnight hour. And he's always there. I thank God for a lot of unanswered There were some things that I thought I wanted, I didn't need. Things that I got that I didn't want, I did need. And he saw fit. It's because whatever you do over at your house is your business. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he's going to reign. every vocation in there, I'm going to run Satan up out my camp. I'm not going to have it. Because I fought too hard and too long to get where I am today. And I'm still a work in progress. But God has been good to me. And I know today which side I want to be on. 
I was baptized, I was already headed into the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm trying to get into the kingdom of God. A whole different realm is up here. And I'm trying to get there. And I know through hard work, prayer, and meditation, God's going to put me there. He's going to make me a very happy Christian. A proud person to be one of his soldiers. To say that my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ, that all knees shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is coming. That's all I have today. May God be with you. And may you travel in peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Which side are you on? Everybody has to choose. It's your choice. Hallelujah. I pray that whatever your choice is, that it will be the right choice. Choose the Lord's side. Let the selfishness go. Give up the ego. Give it over to the Lord. He's able, and he alone is able to get you into the kingdom of God. We thank Reverend Clark this morning for that wonderful word and his testimony. There's nothing better than a good testimony of things that are real because whatever he did for one person, he'll do it for the next. He's no respecter of persons. God loves us all just as you are. From this point forward, make today a better day than yesterday. Love with all of your heart, for God is love. And I bless the Lord for this message. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. And we'll meet you again at Bible study on Wednesday night and see you right back here again next Sunday morning for service here at Plaid Chapel. I love you. Only God loves you more. You be kind to yourselves and enjoy your Thanksgiving holiday week. God bless. Amen. Thank you.